ambient zone function of the audio volume actor is useful for defining rooms or areas where we want to control how sound from inside or outside the volume is occluded. But there is a second system which allows us to use a much more detailed approach to occlusion, looking at how sounds might be occluded by specific objects in the game. Bookmark 7 takes you to cave 2 of the demonstration level. In the centre of this cave there's a magical spell going on. We can hear this sound, Cave Taurus ambient sound actor, throughout the cave. And it attenuates as usual over distance. Now what we might expect is that if we walk behind these large pillars that that sound is blocked a little bit, or it's occluded. So you can hear there the volume of the sound changing. We've used some fairly extreme settings so that you can hear it more clearly. I'll use the stat sound waves command. So you can look at the volume of the torus loop there. It's at 0.15 at the moment. And then as I go behind that pillar, it goes to 0.03. So what's happening here is that in the attenuation settings of this sound, it's using this attenuation called torus, we've set it to use attenuation occlusion. So we've enabled occlusion on this particular sound. The system works through a simple raycast between the audio source and the audio listener, typically the player. If this raycast is blocked by anything, for example the pillars, then the system treats the sound as being occluded and applies the filter and volume settings that you've designated in the sound's attenuation settings. So here we can see we have an option of applying a low pass filter. So in this case we've applied significant filter down to 800 hertz. We can also attenuate the volume. And because it's a binary condition, either occluded or not occluded, there's also an interpolation time so that the sounds are not suddenly switching between the two conditions. This occlusion trace channel here is quite important. It determines which channel is used for the ray tracing. And at the moment, it's set to visibility. One thing you need to make sure of is that in your player character, there are no components that might be blocking that, or else the sounds will be occluded all the time. So you need to check carefully here the collision. So for example, this capsule component uses the collision preset Pawn, and you can see here that visibility is ignored for that particular preset. So that's fine. The visibility is not going to get blocked by this object within the player character blueprint. Let's set up a system within our blueprints so we can see what's going on a bit more clearly. So in the level blueprint, we'll create a line trace by channel node. We'll get the start position, which is going to be the sound itself. So we'll select that ambient sound actor, get a reference to it, and we'll get actor location. So that's the start point of our trace, and we're going to trace it towards the player. So we'll get player character, and we'll get actor location again. So the trace is going to come from the sound towards the actor using the visibility trace channel for the moment. We'll do it on a tick so it's updated every frame, and we'll have it drawn persistently. It makes it a little bit easier to see what's actually happening. Then we'll break out from here to find the name of the actor that it's hitting, and we'll print that to screen. So hit actor. OK, so back in our level, we should be able to see what's going on. So see here, we're getting a trace between the sound actor and the player, and it's shown in red because there's nothing occluding that at the moment. As we go behind the pillar, you can see it's turned green because in the visibility channel, is being blocked by that pillar. And therefore, it's having that occlusion effect on the sound as well. Now, this static mesh actor here for the pillar, it's using default value for its collision presets, which means it's just using whatever was set in the static mesh actor itself. So if we edit that static mesh actor, we can see here 
collision is using the preset block all. So in that preset, visibility is set to be blocked. Therefore, the static mesh actor is blocking that channel. Therefore, we're hearing that occlusion. But there might be other objects in the game where you want it to be excluded from this occlusion system. Let's have a look again in the level. So the sound as expected being occluded by that pillar. But over here, there's just a small rock. And again, because it's blocking that visibility channel between the sound and the player, the sound is actually being occluded. And in this case, it doesn't feel very realistic. We wouldn't expect it to be occluded to that extent. So what we could do is select this actor, look at its collision presets. Again, it's set to default. So we'll edit that static mesh actor and see what the default actually is. So the default is block all again. Now we could say, okay, we're gonna have a custom collision for this and we're gonna ignore visibility. So back in the game, now that object ignores the visibility channel so it doesn't block it and we don't get an occluded sound behind that small rock. So that's what we want, but the trouble is that there might be other things going on in the game that we've just broken. So for example, whether enemies can see us is now gonna be affected because we've switched off the visibility channel for that particular rock by using a custom preset here. A much safer option is to create a specific trace channel just for audio use. So we can see those if we edit the project settings and if we go to collision. So here's our presets. We can see the block all preset that we were just looking at in the static mesh actor. So those are its settings here. Now, what we might want to do is to have a copy of that, but one that does not block a channel that's specifically designed for audio. So let's create a new trace channel and we'll call it audio. And its default response is to block. So now within our collision presets, if we edit them, we've got this new channel here called audio. And for the block all and for most of our presets, we'll leave it at that default here. So let's create a new preset, call it audio exclude. And it's going to have collision enabled. And in this particular one, we're going to exclude the audio. So the audio will be ignored. Now, when we've created a new preset, we'll need to restart the project. Okay, so now we're back. So having restarted the project, let's select this static mesh. We'll edit it. And now in its collision, we'll use this preset called audio exclude. So this will ignore the audio trace channel. So back in the game, we need to make sure that any sounds we want affected by this are using that audio trace channel in their attenuation settings. So here, attenuation occlusion. Yes, we're enabling occlusion, but this time we're using that audio channel. And we'll just revisit our system in the level blueprint to make that also look at the audio channel here. And then if we play, we'll see that channel and its debug conditions. So at the moment you can see, well, actually it's on all the time. Something is blocking it. And that's the blueprint listener focus. As I mentioned earlier, you need to be careful that other objects in the game, for example, anything in within the player character, so components within the player character might be blocking. So if we have a look at that listener focus here, we can see that the sphere within that is using this collision preset overlap all dynamic. So what's a good rule of thumb is to go through these collision presets and make sure that the audio preset generally matches the visibility with the exception of course for our audio preset. So if we go back to project settings here and into collisions, our audio exclude preset is gonna be different. So we want visibility to be blocked. So the enemies can't see us behind this rock, but we don't want the audio channel to be occluded so that the sound sounds normal. But for all the others, for example, the overlap all dynamic preset that the blueprint we were looking at is using, we want that to match what the visibility is doing. So we'll make audio do the same thing. You need to look at all these on a case by case basis. So having set up our collision presets, 
so that that audio channel is now dealt with in a logical way. We should see that, okay, it's not being occluded, and then it is occluded because this pillar was using the preset that has blocked that audio channel. But now our stone over here is using our unique exclude audio preset so that the visibility channel is still blocked. So if I was hiding from an enemy behind this rock, that would still work. But the audio trace channel is not blocked. And so we don't get that audio occlusion when we're stood behind this small rock. It's just worth noting that we've applied the audio exclude collision preset to the static mesh of the small rock. So this will apply to all instances of this rock in the level. We can, if we wanted to, be a bit more bespoke in our approach. There may be a particular actor, a particular instance of the static mesh that you want to exclude from the audio occlusion system. You can do that by overriding the collision preset within the details panel of the actor itself. We've seen how a ray tracing approach to occlusion works and how we can decide which objects will occlude the sounds and which will not. This approach is particularly useful if you have moving dynamic objects within your game world.